And I'd like to bring Javier Orozco back on. And uh, Javier, would you like to say a few words in conclusion? I did put the Arts and Faith St. Louis website up there. Again, I would encourage you to uh, see if you can attend the concert that's coming up. I have been to those concerts before. It's a beautiful experience. And just as Dwayne said, it's a beautiful coming together of people from many different backgrounds. So Javier, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Lisa. And again, to everyone, thank you so much for participating this afternoon. I would just simply add that, uh, as I said at the beginning, I think stories bring beauty, stories bring powers to community. And I am grateful that we can share with one another that beauty and the words that really uh, find echoes and home in our hearts. So again, thank you so much for the stories. Each one of them were so moving, uh, certainly for me, but I think for all of us. And I do encourage everyone to visit Arts and Faith we are here, we are St. Louis, we are you. Thank you so much. And Lisa, back to you. Thank you, thank you. Um, and Becky, if you wanna interpret for me, I, I, there is a question that's coming in from the chat here. Uh, Kathy was asking, let me find the question. Um, what is the impact on young people when they hear these stories? And I don't know, Kathy, if you have that directed towards anybody in particular, or if anybody would like to respond to that. Um, so when I when I perform in, in um, schools and um, especially the, the younger uh, crowd, um, I seem to get a lot more of, I mean, there's a lot of jaw droppers. I mean, a lot of times, and, and it's nice to see that. I mean, once you get past the elementary school kids that ask you, are you really 200 years old? Then you can actually tell them that, uh, and no, you're not, but this is what happened here. And, and so they can, they relate to a lot of, um, a lot of the, the deaths that have, that have been caused through wars, almost every single child there is related to a veteran or knows a veteran and has gone to a funeral and has heard temps. And so um, when I chose this, I, I, it's one of the things that is just absolutely universal. And whenever you hear that song, um, you know that a, a, a soldier has given his life for the ultimate sacrifice. And so I've, I've seen nothing but... Um, positivity from any of the young audiences that I that I go to and it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Anybody else care to respond or share their experiences? Timothy? Well I, I wanted to thank Duane for telling the story about young people. As much as I have known Duane over the years and was involved in that same event, I didn't know that story. And it, it's really important to hear um, how that generation was actually experiencing that incredibly traumatic time, you know, in real time. Um, so that I, I, I thank the Storytelling Festival because, I mean, story is really our, our most powerful tool for shaping the future, right? The story that we tell about ourselves is how we uh, change where we're going. Um, so I, uh, I think we're in urgent need of a, you know, a, a new story for our culture. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. Getting some applause there from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else like to respond? Or are there any other questions for our storytellers? Comments? You know, we had another comment in the chat um, from Rick, Rick Vice, sorry, let me find it here. Um, in regards to Dwayne's story, very powerful connections to our time. He taught at Lee Hamilton Elementary School less than a mile from Ferguson and really appreciated that story, Dwayne. And I, you know, that's a story that is kind of behind the scenes. It's in the green room and people probably know the concert, but they may not know this interaction you know, it's the stories of interactions between people, which those are really the beautiful moments of humanity. And another comment from Patty, Dwayne, I attended the concert you organized at Normandy. It was so powerful. I won't take all credit. That, that was Opera Theater of St. Louis, who really, I mean, they took over our entire Viking Hall and turned it into the premier concert hall in the city for that day. 
and for that moment. So uh, all of that goes to them, but it was a great collaboration. I'll, I'll definitely say that. So thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? Oh, Beth asks, I'd love to hear from Carol about her research. Oh, Carol, there you go. Sorry, you're muted, Carol. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I cannot take credit for all the research. I have a daughter who does it for me and she is just a, a jewel. My daughter researches everything and she brings these people to me and say, you should do this. And so she has found several of the characters that I do from her research, from the things that she does. And she's all over the country researching for me. So uh, Beth, I can only tell you my researcher is my daughter, Jacqueline Shelton. <laughs> Wonderful to have supportive family, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, we have another question, Doris, uh, in a comment, Doris says, thank you for being vulnerable and open to sharing the power and depth of your experience. And, uh, and Dwayne also, thank you, Dwayne says, thank you, everyone. This was cathartic. Hugh says, thank you for this presentation and to the storytellers. Everything was great. Now we did have one other question. Is that concert recorded anywhere? And I think that's the um, opera theater and, and collaborative concert. Is that recorded anywhere on YouTube? And if so, perhaps we could put that in chat or is it archived anywhere? I don't think there's a recording of the concert. Getting a recording of a concert <laughs> like that is a big undertaking and uh, pulling it together was a big undertaking. So we didn't attempt to record it. There are beautiful photographs of, you can see uh, this incredible range of performers who were together at Normandy High School uh, for that moment. Um, but I do think that the Arts and Faith, you know, September 11th concerts are recorded. Uh, so for example, that, that recording or that performance of Seasons of Love just one month after Michael Brown was killed, one of the most incredible things I've ever heard in my life. I bet that exists as a recording. Yes, and uh, Paul, I know you're in the audience there. Uh, if, if you can find a link to that or put it into the chat, that would be great. And I understand what you're saying, Timothy, about not being able to record. Um, and it's a shame, but you know, it's powerful to experience it in person there too. Um, one more question I think we have time for, and this is from Paul to Dwayne. Dwayne, how are your students doing now? Well, it's interesting. We, we have an actual organization, uh, Michael um, Brown Power of Change organization through the high school um, that partners with Michael Brown's mother and a couple of other organizations. And through that, they are focusing on social justice and really starting to learn about the system and, and how to move past certain, you know, of, of the struggles that they're having um, as teenagers. But it's, it's been very powerful because now they have something that is an offspring of such a horrific time, so. Yeah. And the students who were at the concert, a lot of them are, uh, have either finished college. Uh, one of them is assistant human resources in our school district and has her masters. And so it's, it's amazing. And um, I just have to say this to kind of put a button on it. That's why, you know, with my administrators, whenever I have choir field trips or anything, I really try to impress upon them that it's not so much about the actual performance. It's about who they're performing to and who else is performing with them, giving them a chance to speak to other people who don't look like them. It's so important uh, for our kids to get out and, and to um, get into a mixed society so they can experience other cultures. And that is always the best medicine, even when it's not dealing with tragedy, just every day, um, just for the betterment of life, period, learning about other cultures. So applaud you all again for arts and faith, always. I can't wait for it to come back. <laughs> I, I think we all feel that way, Dwayne. 
this is wonderful that we're, we're able to do this and bring everybody together virtually, but of course there's nothing that replaces being there in person and talking and so on and so forth. And on that note, I just wanna say thank you to everybody. It's been such an honor to work with Arts and Faith St. Louis. It's a great organization. Um, and I just wanna say my thanks to Javier, um, to Paul Reuter, who I've been mainly working with, to the storytellers, thank you, thank you, beautiful, and to our beautiful ASL interpreters, thank you so much. <laughs>